Welcome to uh, this uh, new talk show. We're going to be talking about contemporary topics here at the Unshackled and Affirmative Right and other related uh, formats all over the internet. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy these talks and we will uh, you know, bring some enlightenment to uh, the new right side of politics and we'll share different ideas and uh, hopefully engage with the uh, issues uh, of the zeitgeist and of the now. I think every year for, I think maybe about the past five years, and I guess one of the ways we notice it is again through social media, is there's the controversy about moving the date of Australia Day. And um, this year, you know, as we head towards Australia Day, it's in about a week now. So um, there's the usual kind of controversy. You know, some, uh, some of the uh, new left are beginning to, you know, argue that it's Invasion Day, that it's insulting to Aborigines and various other things. But I did notice a couple of interesting things this year. Um, John Birmingham, the, uh, the great Australian author, who wrote, um, he died with a falafel in his hand. Now, he's about as far left as you can get. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm still on his Facebook page. I don't know why he doesn't delete me. I've never deleted him. So uh, I occasionally leave the odd right wing kind of thought on his page. I guess he must be one of those few left wing people left who believes in actually talking to people who have different ideas to his own. He's one of those very rare left wing people because there aren't many of them left. I tell you, we should have him like build a statue to the guy. Because um, anyway, he wrote this article uh, that essentially attacked the notion of the left attacking uh, this Australia Day uh, idea. He said it's kind of a losing battle in a way. And he said there's also a lot more important things to talk about. And I actually completely agree with that. You know, and I do think it is a losing battle because around the same time there was a poll, um, I think, I'm not sure, it was published in The, in the Age and published in Herald Sun and The Australian, um, that said around 75% um, of people do not support the changing of Australia Day, which tells you, what, maybe 20, 25% do support it. I mean, considering maybe 5 or 10% don't care either way. So maybe 15, 20% do want to change it, which is not really a, minor, a majority. You know what I mean? So it's not a popular idea, uh, the moving of Australia. Day. And I do think uh, with John Birmingham that there are many other important issues um, on the left. I mean, this is the whole thing with today's contemporary left. I mean, the left used to be about... I mean, the main issues of the left, and I didn't all, always disagree with them, is that they would argue about economic equity, which is something um, that dates back to Marxism in many ways. You know, it dates back to the ideas that we, that we live in a, a world that's ruled over by a, a mega wealthy elite. Uh, I, I guess it was called the bourgeois elite under classical Marxism, under, I guess, the politics of the new right. We call it the globalist elite, but essentially this is the same concept. And essentially the left and the right have the same... Um, have the same enemies today. And this is why you're seeing so many working class people attracted to the new right as it begins to engage in, I guess, a kind of politics that is supportive of um, the working class and the lower middle class and the middle class. And you see this with Donald Trump. You see this particularly with the yellow vests, which has been a huge movement in France, which is incredibly surprising because it has um, engaged people who are on the right and the left who are working in unity against the, the elite. And this is why it's you know, really, the, the, I think, the biggest threat to global hegemony of the, uh, the, the ruling class or the mega elite. I mean, when you, when you talk about the upper class, I mean, uh, people, I know people who, who are millionaires who have a few million dollars or something. This, I would not consider them, they would be upper class, but I wouldn't consider them the mega elite. When you talk about the mega elite, you're talking about people who have billions of dollars, people who have, you know, large interest in major corporations, you know, you know people like, you know, the guy like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg and um, Soros and these kind of people that can throw large global power around, Bill Gates, etc., etc. These, This, to me, is the class of people that I think we can all unite and fight against. Um, I mean, maybe they're not always up to mischief, these people. I think someone like Soros is definitely up to mischief most of the time, but some of them uh, Richard Branson, people like this. I mean, I guess in a weird way, and this is the weird thing about Donald Trump, Donald Trump comes from this elite class, this elite billionaire class. But it's clear at least, uh, I mean, at least at some level, he is not fully uh, about just that class. I mean, he does have a patriotic nationalist side that I do believe is authentic. And this is why he comes across so different. And this is why he's also such a threat to this mega elite class. Because 
they go, hang on a minute, we're all just about enriching us, us mega elite billionaires and our cronies and our, our puppets and various things. You actually seem to be interested in America and protecting Americans. And then even if he, some of it is fake, as many people accuse him of, of, of being that he's just engaging nationalism for its political gain to himself, I don't believe it is. I think he's, you know, um, I think obviously he's engaged in a fight between this elite and his own nationalist interests. Um, but I think it's authentic and that, um, you know, he's not obviously always able to get what he wants. I think uh, we'll discuss this a bit later on when we talk about the war. But um, um, I think the Australia Day controversy um, really, uh, it, it is a losing battle for the left. I mean, you know, uh, and this, what do they always call it? The main complaint is that it's Invasion Day. OK, well, let's think about what it commemorates. It commemorates the first fleet. Now, were we invading when the prisoners arrived here? First of all, it was a bunch of guards and uh, some people from the uh, British Navy who bring a bunch of prisoners here, you know, who are going to set up a colony, a penal colony in Australia. And now, I'm not entirely sure about the concept of white privilege, but I think the people brought here as prisoners probably would not come under the category of white privilege. You could maybe make the argument that some of the naval officers um, could fall under the character of um, white privilege, but... Really? I mean, you know, they're being sent to the arsehole end of the world to basically run a prison. Um, you know, I don't think Australia began as an invasion. Um, so I think the idea that the First Fleet represents an invasion is a nonsense. I think the idea... Obviously, we came here first, we established penal colonies, and we established other colonies, and that these colonies eventually grew. And then eventually these penal colonies became colonial. And then the process of colonialism began. I think once the process of colonialism began which I think would have been in the early part of the uh, 19th century, early 1800s, um, then there are arguments, you could make arguments that there were nasty things done along the way to achieving the, the nation that is now called Australia. I, I don't disagree with many of the, the nasty things that were done in the senses. I don't say they, don't ha they didn't happen. I think they definitely did happen. But I think the idea that we're all collectively responsible for it now, I mean, it's, it's utterly absurd, you know. And um, so I think it's just a nonsensical argument that Australia began as Invasion Day. It started, if anything, um, as a penal colony. If anyone wasn't free in Australia, it was the white people who were here, or most of them were prisoners. The Aboriginals were still free. I imagine they, they, they looked at us and thought, um, who the fuck are these people? You know what I mean? And then they, some of them were friendly and some of them were not friendly. And, you know, um, so you know, then began this kind of relationship that has, has been positive and negative um, over the years and um, sometimes very negative, uh, I, I'm happy to admit. But like, um, I think, uh, you know, and there's a real lesson here about, um, funnily enough, there's a real right wing lesson here about um, border control. I mean, can you imagine if there was an Aboriginal Donald Trump who had somehow managed to secure the borders of like the, uh, the west coast of Australia? Uh, or, the, or the east coast of Australia, and uh, you know we weren't able to land. I mean, you know, the, basically we wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? So I think the actual case of the Aborigines is, is a great case for securing your borders because look what happens when you don't. Eventually, people come here. They start off as a penal colony. They start off as immigrants, refugees. You could even be made to make a case that prisoners are like refugees, you know. And then suddenly the refugees get this idea: Hang on a minute, we're going to be colonial. We're going to this is going to turn from a refugee situation or from a uh, a kind of immigrant situation into a colonial operation. Uh, and so I think we are facing that threat. And I think that the lesson of the Aborigines is, is a stark proof that this is a real issue. So, um, and I even know actual Aboriginals do think this, but of course they're not the ones that ever get onto the ABC. And this is something else I wanted to talk about, which I think is kind of amusing. Have you ever noticed that when um, you ever see an ethnic minority on the ABC or SBS, they always talk the ideology of the of the white upper middle class uh, left liberal. You know what I mean? Like if ever there's someone who's from the Muslim community, he shares the ideas of, you know, of, you know, like a, an upper middle class white latte sipping because essentially they're racists. They will only allow onto their media people who agree with them. You know what I mean? Um, well, they're not only racist, but they're also, they're not interested in diversity of opinion. Do you ever see many uh, Muslims who, who, I don't know, have a more... Um, conservative view in relation to gay marriage and in relation to the relationships between men and women I mean, lots of different topics Muslims can be quite conservative on even mild Muslims can be relatively conservative on many of these issues do you ever see them on the ABC it's the same with Aborigines do you think the Aboriginal community loves the lesbian and gay community now I'm sure there's some that are 
But do you ever find the ones that aren't? Like Anthony Mundine is here for on, I don't know, Q&A talking about his views. I mean, you know, you know this is, it's because left wing, upper middle class white liberals keep minorities around like pets. And Gavin McInnes made this point. They, they keep them around like pets and they only allow the ones onto their media who agree with them. Which means they actually don't love diversity because if they did love diversity, they would allow these communities or these people from these different communities have varied views. Some of them quite conservative. Some of the some of the views of the Muslim community make the alt right look like social justice warriors, for God's sake. You know what I mean? Do they allow them on the ABC or Q and A or any of these buddy talk shows? Of course they don't, because this is all about what Jordan Peterson said, which is the uh, neo left, you know, kind of uh, um, post postmodern Marxist um, kind of infiltration of media, the universities, pushing this kind of divisive agenda of everybody is oppressed outside of, I guess, the white male patriarchy, who we are the great evil, uh, supposedly, that's just marching through the world. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just simply not the case. And I think, um, I think this whole issue with Australia Day kind of reflects on that and reflects the kind of problems we're seeing in our society, you know. Uh, and these kind, of, these kind of arguments are kind of like fake arguments. You know, these are kind of non-issues. And I find a lot of it a distraction because I think it, it distracts from... And even John Birmingham, John Birmingham made that point that there were better things for the left to do than to run around complaining about Australia Day. And I couldn't actually agree with him more. I was going to completely agree with him about that. There are definitely, I mean, I mean, I've even heard Jordan Peterson talk about that. I mean, he will talk about, you know, the left, the way the left is always crapping on about identity politics, which Jordan Peterson doesn't like. And I don't like some aspects of left wing identity politics. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it maybe as much as he does. But, um, you know, there are definitely uh, uh, other things the left could be doing and particularly the area where the left is strong is when it talks about economic equity where it talks about um you know uh you know unions where it talks about um you know i mean getting a a, a decent day's pay for a decent you know day's work i mean you don't hear you don't hear talk of class struggle or, or the working class or or you know many of these kind of traditional left-wing ideas even discussed it's always talk now of multicultural tolerance and you know, tolerance of the, the LBG community and this whole kind of new identity politics, the whole gender issue, men versus women, you know, kind of misandrous politics of the new feminism. You know, this is, seems to me like a fake politics. And um, as I said, I did do a talk um, that's online on cultural Marxism. I was actually invited to do this talk by a group of Marxist lawyers. They knew I was someone connected to the new right, the alt right. And they uh, asked me to give a talk on, uh, they, they call cultural Marxism the pseudo left, which is a good, good term. Um, which is the fake left, um, f to their uh, conference of lawyers in the United Kingdom. So I, I actually shot it just over there in front of my uh, collection of books on Marxism. And I shot this uh, little address that's online. It's about half an hour long uh, where I talk about cultural Marxism. So, you know, I think it all, it all relates. Uh, and this, this is a kind of fake politics we're seeing, this whole Australia Day issue. And it's just bullshit. You know, we need to forget about it. You know, and I think with this recent poll, 75% of Australians you know, are supportive of Australia Day. So leave the fucking thing alone. And there was a guy from Yothi Indi who came out and said that, yes, he supports Australia Day being there and he would like to educate other members of the Aboriginal community. This is the same guy who also said recently um, that he found the behaviour of Sudanese gangs to be insulting to the, uh, to the Indigenous Australians, that the way many Sudanese gangs are behaving in Melbourne is very insulting to Indigenous community, which I think is fantastic, which is, I think, something that the new right needs to be, um, you know, we need to interview this guy, we need to get him on side because um, this is exactly the kind of thing, you know, uh, it's always when, when you hear complaints about Sudanese gangs, you're, you know, the accusation from the left is that, oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, uh, kind of like, you know, alt-right or far-right race that's having a whinge about some community and it's blown out of proportion. Well, you know, when, when you're hearing people from the Vietnamese community complaining about it, you're hearing an Aboriginal elder like the guy from Yothi Yindi complaining about it, you, you begin to see this as a broader issue and, um, and that this characterisation of the, of the left is, is false and um, that we do have a problem with um, Sudanese crime in Melbourne and that, and that the Australia Day issue is um, basically a load of bullshit. We need to get on and celebrate Australia Day, be proud of this nation. You know, it's, it's, it's not always behaved perfectly, but we can all work together. Um, you know, all nationalities and all ethnicities can work together as long as you're a proud nationalist. Um, we can all get behind each other and uh, you know, continue to make this uh, country you know, a little bit better, perhaps. So that's a good thing. So happy Australia Day to everybody. And um, you know, support the day and, and tell the left to go piss off. <laughs>